Oh, hey, uh, you caught me just, uh, grilling up some hot meats. So a few months ago, my wife and I closed on this here house, and it's been pretty nice. The location's good, we've got a nice backyard, and more space than we had in our old apartment. One of the reasons I was most excited to move into this place was to have a bigger home office. We had an office at our apartment, and it definitely served us well. <sighs> we had an office at our apartment, and it definitely served us well, but I've always dreamed of a place that's somewhere between a lounge and a, and a, and a studio, somewhere I can relax and work, and one of the rooms in this house I think definitely fits the bill. Let me give you the grand tour. This is my battle station. Over here is where all the magic happens. My desk is fully decked out with my PC, monitors, monitors, mic stand, gremlin, mic, and of course a Nintendo Switch dock. My wife's setup is also here on the other side of the room, and in between we've got our entertainment center with a TV and a few game consoles to enjoy at our leisure. Across the room we got peak comfort in the form of this couch. This was the first couch we had at our apartment, so I think it's fitting that after changing hands a few times it landed back here. A few other points of note are my guitars hung in a row on the north wall of this room and the double closets on the north and west walls. That's about it, but I think this room is a good baseline for something much bigger. In order to see that vision through, I'll need a little help from a little program called Blender. Blender, the free and open source 3D software that just won't quit, has absolutely changed the way that I approach some problems. I've used it to take school presentations up a notch, I use it for logos and channel assets, and more relevant to this video, I use it for a bit of DIY interior design. When my then fiance and I moved into our first apartment, our home office looked something like this. Certainly a far cry from the studio lounge concept I had, so I had an idea. You see, Blender gives you the option to use real world imperial or metric units. So I thought, why don't I measure this room, create an accurate 3D replica of the room in Blender, and start the design process from there. I'm not what you might call a well-adjusted person. So after I had my one-to-one -one scale 3D replica of a room in my apartment, I assure you I'm not psychotic, I found some furniture I liked online, modeled that to scale, and placed it in the 3D scene. I did the same with some stuff I already had in my office, and the stuff that I was looking to purchase down the line. After a while, I had something like this. Over time, I saved up enough money to buy the furniture and equipment that I'd outlined, and would you look at that? The same office. What are the odds? Well, I thought it would be fun to go through that process again with this room, taking it from this to this. So let's get started. If you want to try this out at home, you'll just need a pencil, paper, tape measure, and blender. That's really about it. The first step in this process is to take measurements of the room, and plot them out on paper for reference later. I have a notepad here, you can use graph paper or even blank paper for this, and I'm just drawing out the walls roughly the scale. It doesn't have to be perfect, we're going to get the exact measurements in a minute, I'm just getting a representation of the walls and corners I'm going to want to model out later on down the line, including both of the closets in this room, as I've got plans for at least one of them. Okay, with this rough sketch done, I'm going to take my tape measure and measure the length of each wall I sketched. I'm using inches here, you can use centimeters if you prefer, just as long as the units are consistent through the process. I'm also going to take the time to measure the dimensions and distance from the walls to the doors and windows, labeling each on my plot. I'm also measuring the height of the walls in inches. This process can take a while, but take your time. You want to be as accurate as possible. Okay, we're done with the real world, now let's get virtual. But first, I just wanted to let you know that if you like my videos, you can hit the subscribe button to see more, and you can hit the bell next to it to be notified when I upload. If you like what you see, hit the like button. Okay, back to the video. Opening up Blender, I'm going to go into the Scene Properties tab and change the units from metric to imperial, and the length from feet to inches. I'm going to delete the default cube, add a plane, and merge all the vertices at the center. Or I could just enable the Add Mesh Extra Objects add-on and add a single vert. Either way, I've got a single vertex. I'm going to extrude this single vertex along the x-axis and input my first measurement for the east wall of the office. Now I can extrude the vertex along the negative y-axis, inputting my second measurement. Rinse and repeat until the whole perimeter of the room is modeled out. Cool, now we got a floor plan. I'm going to take all these vertices and hit F to make a face out of all of the vertices. And just to be clear, I just made an N-Gon, which is technically not really great practice generally, especially for modeling game assets, but since this is just a visualization made for personal reasons, I don't care. I'm going to take the floor and extrude it to the height of the wall. Okay, now we're cooking, but I can't really see the inside the room that well. Uh, don't worry, there's a solution. 
Going into the viewport settings, I can enable backface culling, and in edit mode, I can flip the geometry by using Alt N flip normals. Just to be safe, I'm going to go into the viewport camera settings and decrease the focal length to increase my field of view in the scene. To make things easier for my soft little smooth little brain, I'm just going to select the floor and separate it using P selection. Now with the walls selected, I'm going to add the doors and windows in edit mode. I'll do this by adding a loop cut with control R and sliding the edge loop all the way to the end of the wall. Now I can slide it by the distance from the wall with G X and type in my measurement. I'll do this again, sliding the loop to the edge of the window I already made and inputting the width of the window. Now we'll do the same process for the top and bottom of the window and uh, bada bing, that's a window. I can delete the face left in the middle and extrude the hole out a bit for some depth. I'll do this with the other window. I'll also close off the top part of the closet by bridging the loop cuts. Okay, that's pretty much it for the base of the room. I went ahead and measured my outlets and where they go on the walls and I placed them where they needed to go. I did the same with the light switch and the doors to the room and the closet. I duplicated the floor mesh and moved it to the top of the wall, flipping the normals. Now it's a ceiling. Speaking of the ceiling, there are some changes I might make concerning the look and general vibe of the room's walls and ceiling. I've thought about painting the ceiling and the walls, switching out with the light fixture here, and maybe putting up some paneling along one of the walls. The whole house was painted this mucus gray when we bought it, and though we went with white for the rest of the house, I wanted to go for a darker shade of gray for the office. I'm not saying these changes are set in stone, but this whole process is about figuring out how things will look before committing to projects and purchases. So let's make some materials for the 3D version of the room. I'm going to start with the walls as this material is pretty simple to make. First I found this drywall normal map that I will apply to the material, and I'm going to bring the roughness up a bit as I want to go with an eggshell finish for the paint. For the color of the paint, I headed over to the hardware store and picked up some swatches that fit my vision for the room. Once I picked a shade I liked, I looked up the hex value and copied it into the base color slot of the material. Now for the ceiling. As for my reasoning, I thought doing a black painted ceiling with a rail light fixture would lend the space a bit more of a professional feel, as well as open the space up a bit vertically. I noticed that the room looks bigger when the ceiling is dark, so I thought I might try that out with this room. I duplicated the wall material and changed the base color to a black shade and applied them to the areas of the ceiling that I'd replace. I also modeled the light fixture just using some cubes and cylinders making sure that it lined up with the actual dimensions of the item itself. I'll go more into detail on that process in just a bit. I plan on getting smart LED lights for this fixture so I can try out different colors and moods by changing the colors of the lights in Blender. Looking pretty good and it's kind of crazy how much of a difference it made already. It's a little empty though, so I'm going to bring in some furniture that I already have and have modeled in the past. First up, my desk and some of the items on it. I modeled these to scale before when I did this to my old apartment, as well as my wife's desk and the TV stand. I also wanted to highlight the idea I had for this closet. The plan is to take off the doors and hardware and put shelves in for DVDs, games, and figures. I thought this would be a really efficient way to store and display media, and could easily fit my current collection with plenty of room to expand. As for new additions to the office, the elephant in the room is this couch. I mentioned earlier that it was peak comfort, but might be a bit of a stretch. It's an old couch, it's not the most comfortable, and it has a pretty massive footprint in the room. I'm looking to replace it with something a bit more modern, squared, and sleek. So in my blender scene, I used the measure tool to measure the distance between the door and the closet, giving me a max length of around 78 inches. So I started shopping around online for couches that fit that measurement. Eventually, I narrowed it down to this futon. I think it'll look nice in the redesign room and it checks all my boxes. I scrolled around for a diagram showing the dimensions of each component of the couch, and I used those dimensions to build the couch out in Blender, starting with cubes and rounding them out with the bevel tool. After a bit of math and a bit of guesswork, I wound up with this model. Putting it into the scene really ties the whole room together. Now there are quite a few things that I modeled for this project, and we'd be here all day if I went into detail on all of them, so instead of that, uh, I'm just going to give you the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> I did it. So I wanted to give a tour of the new office like I did at the beginning of the video, but I don't want to buy all that shit. It's going to be fucking expensive. So how am I supposed to do a tour of the new office if I don't have any of the stuff from the new office? If I'm not going to buy it, what the fuck? What the f Don't worry about it. I got a solution. 
turns out Blender actually lets you walk around your scene in VR if you have an OpenXR capable headset. So I figured I'd give that a try and it'll uh, walk around the room and give you another tour. I'm gonna suit up and we're gonna do the tour. Okay, behold the office. It looks kind of bad right now because Blender's VR support isn't the best and it freezes every couple seconds, but I don't want to spend all the money to buy all of this stuff. So this is what we got to do. You can see right here, this wall I have uh, replaced with a, um, a beautiful slate paneling texture. I don't know if that's going to be an easy, simple, or possible process to do, but I think it looks nice. I also, uh, you can see I, I did the guitars. The guitars are right there hung up um, so that's fun there's a bean bag there that bean bag is gonna be sick I'm gonna be able to sit right there big TV that's all I got to say about that you remember that couch remember how we made that couch together you remember that am I right I put a little table right here there's a table right there IRL but I put a table right here to put my drinkies on some tasteful wall art. I figured, you know, Halloween's coming up. Maybe I could put some scary little uh, movie posters there. I don't know. As we move over to the desk, I've got some music related things uh, that I plan on hopefully uh, filling this desk with as well as a new layout for my desk. And would you look at that? Those are the shelves. They're over here now though instead of over there, and I got some other shelves to put some other stuff on there. The possibilities are endless. I'm gonna make it over to where I have my tripod in real life. In fake life, there's gonna be a mini fridge right there where I can get all sorts of drinks and maybe put some salads in there, who knows? Finally, this is uh, the, the real crowning achievement, the shelves here in the closet. Uh, we got games. We got, I didn't model all of the DVDs because that would take probably close to a year. So I, I decided instead to do all the shows, the books and the games, and you kind of get the idea of where I'm going with that. That's the office right there. I mean, that, that that's really about it. And uh, I'm glad that I was able to commune with you today and uh, just like, God, I, fe I think I'm gonna throw up. This is kind of making me want to throw up. Well, I think that just about does it for this video. I had a lot of fun making this video. I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. Um, as I said, it's going to be really fucking expensive. I hope that in the coming months you'll see some changes around here. I got some more videos coming out hopefully soon. I'm trying to kind of do a mix of content instead of just doing like the same Banjo Kazooie stuff. There's still more of that planned. You'll see in a few weeks, hopefully. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say?